And now, a wits game show. This week's game, Impossible Choices. Impossible Choices, Impossible Choices, Impossible Choices, Only Impossible. Peter, Paul, Mike, the three of you will work as a team in this game. I will present you with an impossible choice. You won't want to choose, yet choose you must because you're on my show. Then I will tell you whether or not you were right. <laughs> you're free to consult, but I will need one answer coming from the three of you. Here we go. You're on a hike. You run into a bear. The bear informs you that he's going to eat you unless you're willing to go back in time and punch either the ghost of Abraham Lincoln or the ghost of Albert Einstein. This is a tough call since you learn in science class that punching ghosts erases the good that the ghost did in his life. <laughs> Which ghost do you punch? I was really ready to say Lincoln pretty fast. Oh, yeah. Until that last part. Yeah. Why, Mike? I mean, do you just, is there something about the way he looks? I mean, <laughs> you don't like that hat? Something. Something about him was just. You're gonna knock more, that hat clean off, that son of a gun. Way more punchable. So Can I you, ask about the bear? No. Because this is, this is a bear with really specific needs. We're living in a world of ghost punching. Except the reality, of, except the scenic reality. I'm willing to buy that a bear might offer me a choice of some kind. Can I just, can, can we do some pros and cons real quick? Okay. Right. Uh, I, I, if we punch the ghost of Lincoln and erase all the good he did, it was really only that one thing, right? Gee. <laughs> that I feel like, nope. Pr no, pr pr pretty it important was, thing, here, though. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. But hear, hear me out. Here, Nothing. Hear, hear me out, Mike. Nothing to sneeze out. at. Mike, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Yeah, I like this. Hear me yeah. out, Mike. There's more. There's more. Now. There is more. Just open your mind on this, Mike. I feel like, I feel like, so that was a thing that had to happen. So if not Lincoln, it was definitely going to happen. Oh, slippery slope there. I know, I know. But with Einstein, people are rejecting science left and right in the 21st century. And so I feel like if we erase all the good that he did, um, then probably the best we get out of it is the atomic bomb. Gentlemen, are you Lincoln punchers? No, or no, no. I, I've got to, I've got, the problem is, is that Lincoln was a historical actor, and if he wasn't there to act, he might not have acted. History might have played out quite differently. So let's punch however, Einstein. You have however, 15 seconds. Einstein discovered, he was the first and ingenious to do so, but he discovered a physical property of the universe, which is there. Somebody else would have discovered it. And today... You know, when so, it might have been like somebody else, like named Berkowitz. So if somebody else, and, it and would really, have been a Jew, let's admit that. <laughs> <laughs> and so then if you said something stupid today, we'd say, oh, thanks, Berkowitz. But otherwise, yeah. okay. the universe would be the same. We Gen would just be down like one episode of Cosmos. Exactly. That's, what I'm that's, saying. that's pretty much it. So, uh, gentlemen, are you punching uh, Einstein then? I, I say Einstein. 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 Einstein is the correct answer. Congratulations. Next question. George Clooney and Matt Damon are co-presidents of the United States of Clooney Damon. United States of what? Clooney Damon. <laughs> they, force, I asked. <laughs> they force you to decide which of them will be your best friend. This doesn't sound too bad at first, but there's a catch. Being besties with G to the C means that you'll be unable to taste food for the rest of your life. That's if you choose Clooney. If you choose Damon, you'll develop an irresistible craving for kitten meat. Please pick one. All right, so you can pick George Clooney as your best friend, but if you do that... You'll never taste food again. Never taste food again. If you pick Damon as your best friend, an irresistible, craving insatiable for kitten. craving. Yeah, you kitten. can never get enough kittens. What's really interesting is that that kind of takes the whole question of who would you actually like to be your best friend really out of the picture, doesn't it's it? It's immaterial at this point. <laughs> They're both pretty great that guys. That was a feint. I yeah. was thinking Clooney, Damon, both good. See, you spent, you're, a, you're a host of a quiz show. You spent too much time questioning the questions. <laughs> and, you, and you clearly are not the host I of a quiz show. I am not. <laughs> well, you right, get him, so, Pete. So, <laughs> 
This is my turf, mister. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so the question to us is really, Damon Clooney, who cares? I, I feel Eating that... kittens are not tasting food. Yes, I feel that the, the earth is chock full of pleasures. Um, and I think that as someone who struggles with uh, uh, issues of food, uh, it would be a blessing to not taste food ever again because I would just eat till I wasn't hungry anymore and I would never eat for comfort. Um, and so, and I also wouldn't be eating kitten meat. <laughs> and George Clooney has that house in Italy, right? Nice. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. Clooney is the correct answer. Congratulations. Oh, nice. You're two for two. That was a close one. All right. I would have eaten the kittens. <laughs> Nobody asked. Apparently, you and Matt can go off and eat all the kittens you want. Right. The international. Tell me, Matt would eat kittens with me. <laughs> <laughs> that changes the picture, doesn't it? The International Society of Fun Things had their funding cut and are being forced to get rid of one of the world's fun things. Please help them decide whether to get rid of comedy or pizza. Oh, pizza. Pizza. Is there any question? I beg your pardon. <laughs> Professional comedian Paul F. Tompkins? Yeah. Um, speaking as someone who has struggled with uh, issues of food. <laughs> <laughs> and who is a comedian. <laughs> comedy can go to hell. Really? Yes. But I'll, if, find, I'll find something else to do. But if, if, if there was no comedy... And Maybe just, I'll open a pizza parlor. If, if there, was, if there was no company, just pizza, you would then be a sad, unemployed man really struggling with food problems. So, like, I would think there's something I should be doing, but it just doesn't exist. I know. You'd go on stage and just say facts. I guess I'll have another piece of pizza. This is not sounding bad to me, Peter. I say get rid of pizza, because if you get rid of all pizza, some of which is good, you get rid of Chicago pizza, which is my bete noir. <laughs> and it's worth it. Mm. Mm. Wait, let me you say look. get rid of oh, Chicago Oh, let's not do pizza. this. Oh, no. Oh, no. How would this affect the opening of Louie, which features both comedy and pizza? And is there no longer laughing aloud? If you laugh at something, does it just disappear at that point? I oh, yeah. I think uh, the, the institution of constructed humor into comedy is no longer there, but things may still be funny. So I can just laugh at pizza then? You can laugh if the pizza's funny enough. Okay. So if you were eating your pizza at home, you'd just be watching documentaries then? Yeah. Dramas. Just sounds like a Tuesday night at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get an extra large anchovy and crank up the sour, sorrow and the pity again. Hey, eh, Mrs. Right. Moe? Yeah. All right. Public broadcasting, dude. Um, <laughs> gentlemen, I need a decision. Do you eliminate comedy or pizza? I say pizza. I vote pizza as well. Two against one, I'll go along with the crowd. Uh, pizza is the right answer because a flatitza would still be allowed. Oh. Yeah. Three for three, congratulations. I actually want the audience to know he's actually keeping score. I am. <laughs> he makes little hash marks. Look, some of us can keep score on our own and don't need any <laughs> announcer. <laughs> Finally, I have to think about the bear. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, you just enrolled in college. Your college offers three majors only: professional roller coaster designer, professional adventurer, or computer science. Which do you choose? You are one person in this uh, particular example. I don't see how there's any choice. Uh, other than professional adventurer. Oh, that, that's, I mean, that seems like there, there must be some trick here. Yeah, right. I don't trust this. I don't trust this question at all. Mike? Uh, yeah, I'm just as nervous about picking what seems to be the obvious answer. So you all choose professional adventurer? So the first one was roller coaster designer. Yes. Which I was ready to go for until you got to the adventurer. Sure. What, was the, cool what was the third one? Computer science. Computer science. Yeah. In yeah, the, we're, we're all suspicious here. In Here's the spirit a, of the Twilight Zone, let's say that we, uh, we all agree to be a collective uh, uh, adventurer. Yes. All right. Sorry, the answer was computer science. But still, you got three out of four, and that's, uh, that's pretty good. Are you going to explain that? At all. No, it's just pretty all right. computer science. <laughs> Congratulations, Peter Sagal, right. Paul F. Tompkins.
and open mic eagle. <laughs>